Hi there, I'm Matt Montgomery. I'm part of the agronomic team here in the central and west central part of the state of Illinois for Pioneer. And the field that I'm in today is exhibiting some symptoms, some yellowing of the bean plant that's really catching the eye. And it's a good reminder of two things. Number one, this field is a good reminder about a pest that's a big one for us in soybean production that we sometimes forget about. And number two, it's a great practical lesson about symptoms not necessarily giving us enough information about what's going on in the field. Symptoms don't always lead us directly to the cause of those symptoms. The symptoms that you're seeing here, let's start with those, are exactly what we just talked about. There's yellowing, but the yellowing is happening because the margins of those trifoliates are yellowing while the interior of the leaf looks green. We would be tempted because of those symptoms to say that this is potash deficiency, and that's probably an accurate diagnosis of the symptoms, but that does not tell us the cause behind those symptoms. We have to go through the mental list of things that could cause symptomology like this, knock them out one by one, and then get down to our final explanation that has enough supporting evidence to really figure out what's going on in the field. The potash levels aren't bad in this location. We don't have any evidence otherwise also for things like herbicide damage out in the field. And these symptoms aren't really fitting along with herbicide type injury symptoms. We see no evidence of insects that might be feeding and causing the margins to yellow. We see no evidence of fungal disease on the root, on the lower part of the plant that might cause symptoms like this as well. Instead, we have to dig figuratively and literally to see what's going on. Remember, we're only seeing one half of the problem. We're seeing the above ground half. We have to dig and look at the root system itself. And when we do that in this field location, we begin to notice small little white dots on the root material that catch the eye if we're looking carefully. Those are cyst females, soybean cyst females, feeding on the root material, slowly sucking away water and photosynthate and nutrients, thus resulting in the symptoms that you see here. We don't usually see above ground symptoms from soybean cyst nematode, but we have a couple things working together here that are causing that issue. Number one, we're in droughty conditions. This crop is under additional stress. And when a crop is under additional stress, that's when those above ground symptoms of soybean cyst nematode sometimes manifest themselves. Number two, we apparently have an incredible population of soybean cyst nematode out here. We say that because I could spot it with the unaided eye. It didn't take anything for me to spot this pest on the root system. And that is rare. That's a rare case for that to happen. And we apparently have so many in this soil that are catching my eye so easily that they're plowing right through the, re the resistance package in these beans, that parent source of resistance. They're plowing through the Alevo that we use as a second hurdle to kind of knock them back. They're so high they're getting their licks in before those two tools can take care of the problem. So what are we going to do out here for this problem? We're going to go to a couple years of corn because the population is really, really high in this field. Then we're going to come back. We're going to soil test retest with a soil sample and see if we've drawn those populations down enough that we can truly get the full good out of those resistance packaging in the bean packages that we sell and the full good out of Alevo, etc. One other thing, why are we seeing the problem here? This is a field that flooded. It deposited a lot of sand right here. So a lot of silt and sand and other material because of the way that water flowed in this field dropped right here. And any time we move soil, we also carry with it the potential to move soybean cyst nematode. That's the big way that soybean cyst nematode moves, is the movement of soil particles, soil from one field to another. That deposited quite a population here, and that's part of the reason why we're seeing these issues. So again, the big problem here is soybean cyst nematode, the number one yield reducing pest of beans. We don't usually see above ground symptoms. We are in this case because of stress and an extraordinary population of soybean cyst nematode 
in this apparent area that we're in. Our solution is going to be a couple of years of corn, then coming back to beans because corn is going to pull that population back. And we learned that we have to always be very careful that we don't jump to conclusions when we see symptoms in the field, that we carefully dig through all the possibilities for the symptoms that we see, slowly mark one by one off the list and get down to that final explanation that is truly the cause. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll talk with you soon. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.